So what does it mean to be a consultant? What does it mean to consult? What does it mean to be a good or a great consultant? There's a quote from uh, somebody who's been a consultant for a while. Um, as a consultant, you have to be reliable and you have to be skilled. But you can't make the mistake of thinking that your great skills will cover for lack of reliability. In general, you're better off being good and reliable over great but flaky. So what do we mean when we talk about consulting? Look, here's a typical definition, that's a textbook definition. Consulting is a practice of providing an individual or an organization with expertise in a field in exchange for a fee. So you have a skill set that is uh, not common, that is rare. They have a need for the skill set. You provide them the expertise. They pay you for your work. That's pretty straightforward. Uh, you might be hired by the company, by the organization, to supplement their existing staff. Like it's conceivable that they already have staff, they just don't have enough of them, and they're not willing, or at least not looking, to hire a new employee, and you are not looking to be an employee. Right? Consultants enjoy a certain amount of, um, at, uh, at arm's length, uh, independence from the company, and that's something that most of us who do consulting on a regular basis sort of appreciate from the job. You might also be brought in to provide an external perspective, right? Uh, the types of duties you may have as a consultant, you might be called upon to make recommendations uh, that allow the organizations to improve their products or services. Uh, you might be called upon to implement solutions. Perhaps your role will be to breathe new life into a failing project. Uh, potentially, you'll be brought in to train employees. Now that seems, again, like pretty straightforward. Um, you have to realize and understand that even though you might have been brought in by people who are willing to pay you to do these things, there's likely to be a fair amount of pushback and or um, unhappiness with an external individual, an outsider coming in and, well, making recommendations. Uh, if you're making recommendations to improve products or services, in essence, what you're doing is you're criticizing their current um, processes. And it takes a very open-minded organization, an individual, to, well, to, let, to accept being criticized. Myself, as an individual, I, I don't like being criticized. In fact, I, I very often internally feel like uh, putting up walls when I'm being criticized. But you can imagine organizations doing something of a similar nature. <clears throat> Implementing solutions <sighs> sounds straightforward, as I said. Uh, there's a number of issues here. Why is it that the company cannot implement the solution themselves? And so you need to figure out why an outsider needs to be brought in to implement a solution. It could be that you're the only person that is able to do this kind of work and you don't feel like being hired by the company, so you're going to be brought in as an outsider. That's a possibility. But it's unlikely that you're the only person who can do this job. And so um, there's a little bit of digging that you have to do as a consultant before you sort of like say, yeah, sure, I'll do this. And the same goes for breathing new life into a failing project. Why is the project failing? Is this a failure of leadership? Is this a failure of... Uh, planning? Is it a failure of, you know, the project just cannot be successful? It's impossible. We've, we've hit a wall. Um, are you just being brought in as a scapegoat in these cases? Training employees? Well, you have to ask yourself the question, how much training can you really do in a finite number of hours? You're not going to be brought in to train employees for four straight years, right? People have jobs. They can only spend a little bit of their time on training. Are you being brought in to do like window dressing to give the illusion of training? Or are you going to be really helping people learn new things? What kind of abilities do the prospective students have, the employees that you're going to be training? If they have the right skill set, the ability to be trained by you, why are they not training themselves? 
So it could be that you're being brought in to train people who do not have the ability to be trained. And if they don't have the ability to be trained, what does that mean for your chances of success? What are some of the things that you need to bring to the table as a great consultant? Look, uh, we're going to start with the consulting skills and behaviors. You have to have some business acumen. You have to understand how business works in general. Uh, you have to have some understanding of project management. How do you bring a project from point A to point Z, knowing that you're going to have to work with other people, that you're going to be working on other projects, and that these other people are also going to be working on other projects. How do you keep all of this from falling apart? Uh, it's crucial to know how to do teamwork. Now, if my past experience with students stays valid, uh, teamwork is actually not something that you've done an awful lot of, at least not the way that consultants view teamwork. This is something you need to know how to do. Recognize when to take the lead, when to take a back seat, when to focus on getting the job done as opposed to focusing on who hasn't done as much as they should be doing. Uh, you need to spend a fair amount of your time on personal development and professional development, which means that you never stop learning. Uh, professionalism is something that you need to have at your disposal as well. What do we mean by that? It's like, well, there's a standard of behavior and a standard of skills that your specific profession will have, uh, and you need to be able to adhere to that. Amongst other things, that means you don't find ways to blame the client or blame other people when things don't work out. You take ownership for failures as well as, you know, share the credit when you have successes. You do the work when that you said you were going to be doing. You treat your colleagues and your clients with respect. And you don't accept lack of respect from the clients and from other teammates. Not just directed at you, but directed at others. Uh, you have to have a sense of ethics. We'll talk about that uh, in a little bit. Analytical, predictive, creative thinking, that, that's, your, that's your key. You need to have a fair amount of emotional intelligence. It is not sufficient to have a great IQ. Uh, you need to be emotionally intelligent as well. Recognize the needs of your team and recognize the needs of your clients. And very importantly, you need to learn how to communicate the results, your feelings, your emotions in a way that will actually be effective. In terms of competencies, look, they have to have business understanding and external awareness. This is often referred to as the pestly competencies. They have to understand the politics of the situation, the economical issues, the social issues, the technological issues, the legal issues, the environmental issues, and the ethical issues related to the situation, the project. Uh, you have to be competent at managing client relationship, how to give the client what they want without you know, draining you and your team, how to process uh, the steps in consulting. Like, how do you engage a client? How do you develop the product that they need? How, how do you deliver the product and the service? And how do you disengage from the relationship once the work is done? Uh, you need to be competent in the specific tools and methods of your consulting specialty. Not every consultant will be working on the same type of jobs. Uh, typically, when you you have a specialty, there's not two or three types of things you are likely to do, and then you focus on these types of things. So there's various types of consultants. I'm just going to list some of them here. We'll focus on the one that, um, the type of consultant that is perhaps more germane to what we're going to be doing in this class. So strategy consultants tend to focus on corporate strategy, economic policy, government policy, and so forth. They basically play an advisory role and are not really involved in any implementation uh, of their advice. Uh, they still have to have quantitative and analytical skills, but since they're not going to be the ones implementing it, perhaps they'll just be giving information or directions to uh, various uh, groups. Operations consultants, on the other hand, they would be focusing on improving the performance of operations, increasing the sales or increasing the number of tin cans of cream of mushroom soup you can produce or that, that type of thing. They work with various elements of the organization that is hiring them, but typically with strategy people and also with technology people. And the types of projects they would 
take on would vary from advisory as the strategy consultants would to implementation. Human resource consultants, on the other hand, would spend more time on topics related to workplace culture or recruitment or anything really uh, linked to human resources. And there's a catch-all term here that, that is used to describe the first three types of consultants. We call them business consultants or management consultants. It's not really the kind of stuff we're going to be talking about in this course. Right? Most of what we're going to be talking about applies to consultants which would be housed in financial and analytical advisory shops. So when I was a consultant in an actual group that did consultancy, this was where I was located. So there the focus is on either financial matters or analytical matters. And in many people's minds, the financial and the analytical are basically the same thing. So you don't typically spend time with numbers unless the numbers actually represent money. Um, you need to have some subject matter expertise on top of quantitative and analytical skills. So perhaps you know an awful lot about tax law. You might know a lot about risk analysis, about statistics, about machine learning, you name it. Most of us will fit in to that slot. Some of you, though, might fit in in the IT consultant category. There you spend a fair amount of time developing IT products, whether in the form of data analytics or security products. There you work on specific projects, not on business as usual activity. And you have to have technological technical skills as well. You need to know how to program or you need to know how to use the, uh, the tools that the company is using to deliver their product. You might also find some project work as a specialized consultant or an expert consultant. There you come in for a very, very specific task and typically that task would be very short. But you have to have expertise in a specific field. 